here uh, the first time, and I'm very <coughs> curious to see what you think about our work. And I would like to introduce you to our research, research project that we are doing in Westphalia, which is the almost most western parts of Germany. And we are dealing with the question that is highly up to date. Um, so how can LIDAR-based um, digital terrain models be um, analyzed, uh, analyzed as automatic and energetic as possible. And this is a very young project. Um, it started with my master's uh, thesis two years ago, and now it's my PhD project, so that's why it's some kind of workshop report. <coughs> so we have done um, workflows, we have done uh, methods and techniques, and um, we have some preliminary results so far, but what we do not have um, is the Result evaluation on the on the bigger scale. Um, this is the structure of my presentation. In very short, I want to focus on the research research questions of the last years in order to localize our project um, in there. And then I would like to show you um, our area of Westphalia of our region and what challenges are there to be solved. Third, I want to write my research goal out of that in order to show you in chapter 4 uh, what we've done so far and in five in final thoughts I would like to tell what we are planning for the future. So I'm, I think you're all familiar with these questions um, from the history of LIDAR and archaeology and as you can see by the glasses we are dealing with the third question and in particular we are trying uh, to solve um, the problem of detecting aerial field monuments. So with um, the technique of template matching, which was, prove me if I'm wrong, um, only used for like, discrete um, field monuments, for example, burial mounds, and we try to adapt it for uh, Celtic fields, which uh, we will see on the next slides. Um, then one word to number two, um, and all this um, research we still maybe want to try later on um, to optimize the visibility of the field monuments even further in the difference maps and in the local relief model so far and maybe there can be some enhancements <coughs> and some killings be done. So this is Westphalia, um, in the almost western part of Germany, by the way this is uh, Cologne somewhere, um, and we are dealing with um, about uh, three-fourths of all this area being uh, forest and agricultural land, which means that these areas are interesting for archaeological prospection. So there's definitely a need for automation. And we are looking for um, these four types of field monuments, um, modern baby castles, grave mounds, rich and furrow structures in Celtic fields. And the letter three I will show you today. Um, so let's look what the field monuments look like. Um, these are Richard Ferro structures near Münster, um, in case someone knows them. And by the way, these um, are the same structures that we saw on the title slide as a photo. And we'll see this picture in the last, or almost last slide again, but just with colorful markers on it. Uh, second, I want to show you um, the Celtic fields, which are roughly the same as in, in the purpose, um, roughly the same as uh, rich and structures, like farming. And um, these were detected in Westphalia two years ago for the first time, and that's why we want to try to detect these um, as quickly as possible. And by the way, these are difference maps. We are using them because of enhanced visibility and some other reasons that I can't uh, cover now because of, of the time. So what's our research goal? I think you've guessed it already. We want to try uh, to develop a tool for a highly automated search and extraction of field monuments in West Asia. And we are um, following two approaches there. On one hand, you can trace the shape of a field monument, which means that you um, like set a marker on a grave mount and do that for every, every grave mount, for example, every mount. And the second approach is especially for um, aerial field monuments, that you um, put a marker on the location of the mount 
but not uh, mark every single part of it. So we have in the end of the workflow that you can see below here, and I will go on that in detail later on, um, we have areas of interest which, which still need interpretation, and uh, we, are the, we are of the same uh, opinion as everyone, interpretation will not be um, automated in the near future. And um, so we will automate everything except interpretation. And speaking of automation, we are doing this, um, since I'm, I'm a, ge a geographer, we're doing this with uh, GIS and Python, um, so that we can implement everything into one system. Um, lastly, we would like to find out which combinations of techniques and methods and visualizations work best for um, Hit Monument A, Hit Monument B, so just to optimize the workflow there. Speaking of workflow again, um, this is the general workflow so far. Um, nothing uh, surprising, we have on the left side the LiDAR input, LiDAR data input, and then um, we go into different workflows depending on the field volume that we would like to extract, and um, both ways um, include the preparation, which means the calculation of the, visit, um, of the visualizations um, in the GIS, and then we are handing over the data to our object-based image analysis tool, which does the extraction of these three monuments, um, water daily parcels, burial mounds, and rich and ferrous structures. And in the bottom part, which is uh, quite new from the last year, um, we're doing template matching that we implemented in the same GIS tool as we did with the uh, um, preparation. So in the end, we have feature classes, um, also shapefiles, for those who worked with GIS before, um, which include the areas of interest that still need to be interpreted. Um, to make that more easy, we use uh, land use cover information to stamp out areas um, where no uh, field monuments can be preserved, which means, in general, sealed areas. You will see that later on. <coughs> so, just a brief summary of um, object-based image analysis, which is the one technique that we're using so far. We are classifying objects instead of pixels, and the objects represent the structures that we would like to, to detect. And for these objects, um, statistics and relationships, neighborhoods, to other objects uh, get calculated, and with these <coughs> statistics you can build and create classes, um, a class for burial mounds, a class for something like others, and if an object fits to the class description, it gets classified. Quite simple, actually. <coughs> so this is part of my master's uh, thesis two years ago, and um, we try to detect burial mounds with um, object-based image analysis. And what you see on the right side is um, colorful markers um, of potential burial mounds. And the green ones are uh, nearly ideal shaped, and the red ones are highly eroded um, uh, areas. So um, why did we do that? We could easily optimize a class description uh, regarding its um, to a high correctness value, um, but we did not want to lose anything and on, the, on the same uh, time, uh, did not um, want to um, kind of submerge the ideal shape ones into the, into the others. So in this approach, um, we can interpret the most interesting one at first, and later on still can um, interpret these ones if needed or wanted. Um, and since the classes um, are based on reference data, we can say that even the um, baddest looking areas um, still can be a very amount. <coughs> Correctness values can reach up to 90 or in single cases even 100%, um, but that's nothing um, that is every day. And we also detected new mounts. Alright, so this is the next thing that was also part of my master's thesis and was done with object-based image analysis. Um, you have seen this picture in the beginning, and now we have in uh, blue color marked red and ferro structures um, 
that let us see where the areas are. And these structures were identified by their adjacency to uh, similar structures. So the approach was that we said, okay, if we have one structure that is surrounded by others of the same type, we have a rich and furrow area. And in red, in red, you see these adjacent ridges and furrows that are not part of the result. I just show them so that you know how it works. Uh, so the um, archaeologist in the end has just to interpret the blue ones and can set a marker or can do whatever he wants with um, that area. Um, so I think the result looks quite good. We have blue structures in every bigger area. And on the other hand, we do not have two structures in areas where no chaotic, uh, sorry, no rich and narrow structures are preserved. Like for example, this area. Okay. So the second um, technique that we are using since 2017 is template matching because we found out that object-based image analysis did not work, in, at least in our case for the detection of chaotic fields. And um, as for object base, a very uh, short summary of template matching, we are comparing two images um, and we're moving image one, which is a template, over a, a, a digital terrain model, which is picture two. And the template represents our structure that we would like to find. Um, and at every position, the correlation gets calculated and we start on the top left and then the correlation is um, uh, calculated between the template and the underlying, underlying part of the terrain model. And the value, the result of the correlation uh, calculation is uh, written in the <coughs> top left pixel. <coughs> so then the template is moved over the um, terrain model and the result is a correlation map that you will see on the next page. And um, there are the higher the pixel value um, the more um, probable is, it is that um, there is a hit, like, um, like there is what we found, what we would like to find. Um, and then in the case of chaotic field, we have, a, uh, we have to implement rotation, um, but that's not really um, difficult uh, for the computer to do, but we just have to reassemble the results because we get more than one result. So let's look at an example. This is the um, picture that you saw in the beginning with a marker set on the chaotic fields area. And these are the structures that we would like to extract and to find. And um, re re remember that the, the approach, we just want to set one marker into this area <coughs> instead, of, um, instead of marking all these single structures. And for preservation purposes, I um, extracted a template from this terrain model, optimized it a little bit, and rescaled it so that you can see it better. Then the software removes it over the, over the, the area, and in the end you get this correlation map. And what you can see on, on first uh, glance is that this position is the exact position where I extracted the template. And for further visibility, I added some colors. Um, so the higher values are yellow and the highest values are pink. And what you can see is, or what at least I see, <laughs> is that uh, these areas with the high pixel values uh, slightly correspond to this area with the chaotic fields. And of course, these results are very clearly the part where I expected the template. But um, we get also some a higher concentration of, um, the, uh, of high values in this area, although the chaotic fields do not look like the template um, very much. So that's the thing where we said, hey, this looks quite good, and we want to um, continue in that point. <coughs> then we have this, um, just, a, um, just for you to notice, we have this red box which is an area that gets uh, refused and the results of that area get, get deleted again because we have, in this case, um, a farmhouse and, and there can't be any field monuments um, preserved. So this is the current graphical user interface um, of our tool. 
Unfortunately, it's in German, but <laughs> I will uh, translate that later on if you like. So it's very easy to populate. You just have to uh, give the tool an input with the input data. Then you can do some settings um, with uh, all default settings if you like. Then you have to say if you would like to do some template matching or not, just calculation of, uh, of visualizations. And then you have to say what you would like to do, um, like searching for package fields, but now is the only possibility. And then the tool does everything for you and gives you back the, the results for interpretation. So I will just come to my final thoughts. Um, some of them, I think, will be uh, familiar to you. Um, automatic detection will not replace manual interpretation, as I said, but it will massively uh, support archaeologists in their work. Um, regarding the uh, classification techniques, object-based image analysis seems to be suitable, or at least more suitable, for the detection of discrete monuments, at least in our case, and template matching seems to be suitable also for the de detection of aerial monuments. Um, the combination of GIS and PIN is a very good possibility to integrate all techniques into a user-friendly and automated tool. So, the last slide, you see what we are planning for the future. We still have to um, think about the organization of results, so that means that we still have to come from the high pixel values to to like a marker that you can see here above. Um, so we just want to hit a marker in, in this area and we have to derive that. <coughs> then we have to think about the scaling and the shaping um, of the templates. Um, we have to maybe think about the vis visualization and uh, maybe we also will implement some other techniques um, like deep learning. I'm curious to see what the others do in that area. And lastly, of course, the big evaluation of our results. So then there are some preferences that you all might know if you're not the author. And <laughs> lastly, uh, thank you for your attention and I'm curious on the feedback. Thank you.